In this Tobacco University video, we're, we're going to get into how and where are cannabinoids produced. We're getting into some really uh, in-depth scientific research articles as well, which might be a little bit more advanced uh, than some people may want to know, but at least here you can get some good detailed information, look at some good images, and if you just want the basics, that'll be provided here also on this video lecture. All right, let's get into the detail on how and where are cannabinoids produced in cannabis plants. So first off, here's a great research article that you're welcome to take a look at. Uh, the images will be provided from here. Uh, and again, so provided with that extra level of detail than just a quick, simple answer. However, I realize many of you are probably here for that quick and simple answer. So uh, when we're looking at where these cannabinoids are produced, well, phytocannabinoids are synthesized in the capite-like stalked granular trichomes, or the CSG as they'll be referred to, and this is kind of the structures that they look like. That's the quick answer. If that's all you wanted, uh, you're welcome to depart from the video at this time. We have a lot more detail to get into. Now, what I've provided here is some great um, images uh, to be able to really look at the details of providing in these uh, trichome structures and we're looking at light microscopy and A and B. So typically what you we're used to seeing, uh, we're looking kind of a side shot as well as looking kind of like a top down shot um, there of the of cross sections. Then we're also getting into some SEM, which is some scanning electron microscope images, which provide great level of detail. Almost looks like something kind of uh, from space here. And we're seeing kind of the um, scale bars on to give you an idea of size. We're looking at some of the definitions here of all the letters correspond with basically the caption per Presented here. We'll go through and read it all, uh, but it does give you, if you do have an image you're really interested in, match it up over here and you can find out some more detail. Um, a little more detail than you may want to understand, but basically trichomes is what we're looking at here. So looking at the trichome development to kind of <clears throat> pull back, if you will, uh, came as trichomes because as a sessile glands lacking a stalk and they start near the surface of the floral or leaf epidermis. Remember epidermis like our epidermis is kind of the outer skin on both the adaxial and apodaxial um, sides, the so top and bottom of the um, leaf surface and plant surface. Uh, these sessile uh, glandular trichomes are present on the vegetative plant, but they are not expressing the synthesis for cannabinoid production or monoterpenes. They produce primary uh, subsequent uh, terpenes there, kind of like the early, early stages there. This kind of shows us just some great images here, really looking at some detail uh, with on the cannabis leaf surface at those trichomes. Now, production of these uh, cannabis will only occur uh, at certain points. So they only occur when the plant reaches fl floral maturity. Do these sessile trichomes begin to grow stalks, kind of see here, and become that um, CSG kind of um, trichomes. And only during this phase does it begin to produce cannabinoids as well as terpenes. So this is why we don't want to harvest plants too early because if the trichomes are underdeveloped, well, so are the cannabinoids, so are the terpenes. It's going to be very low in concentration. So trichome example image, you know, kind of looking at kind of the large scale and kind of more of a zoomed in version. The little crystals on the flower are actually those uh, capite stalked granular trichomes, those CSGs, uh, which sparkle when they catch the light, especially when they're dried. These are the structures we really want to be careful with uh, as far as avoid damaging. They're also located right here. We can kind of see that zoomed in version right here of how the density of the trichomes is quite high in this particular image. Uh, so these CSGs, a uh, close-up picture here, within the glands are secondary metabolite excretions, which are the primary, the cannabinoids are going to be present in these structures. So again, these are raised structures. They are three-dimensional. We don't want to do any damage to these. And this is why that handling of the final dried flower is so delicate and important. Now, more detailed images. Again, I think these are also great um, to kind of give you that kind of really um, advanced level look at some trichomes and we're looking at the flowers here and are kind of stained in uh, different images. These stock granular trichomes and mature cannabis flowers have a proliferation of cells in their secretory discs looking at kind of the interior portions. These sessile trichomes uh, with greater than eight gland cells will develop these CSGs and are typically located on the calyx which is the structure of the flower. 
Only CSG trichomes produce cannabinoids and monoterpenes. So it's very important we have as many of those as possible since they're the only structures responsible for producing the cannabinoids. If we're looking at the details of these images, again, you're kind of not looking from the side, you're kind of looking from the top down, um, and we see the kind of description uh, provided here for all of those. And then it also provides a little bit more of a macroscopic image and appreciation for the level of detail provided here. Then there's granular trichomes, again, looking at another great kind of detailed image um, there of some of these. These granular trichomes exhibit distinct uh, intrinsic inflorescence and metabolite organization. CSGs developed from those sessile granular trichomes, and here we're seeing some side shots as well. Sessile trichomes produce predominantly uh, the terpenes, these subsequitarian terpenes, and minimal cannabinoids, and produce red auto uh, fluorescence that we see here. The CSGs produce cannabinoids and monoterpenes and produce blue autofluorescence, as we kind of see here. So that staining also goes through. And we see them kind of uh, average intensity here of our intrinsic uh, fluorescence in trichomes, different wavelengths uh, being produced. And we see the degree, and there are some variations. So I don't think that's just this is a perfect curve. There are some degree of variations there. Uh, but just to kind of get an appreciation for different wavelengths, average intensity here, and the um, intrinsic inflorescence. Now, if we're looking at the images, some great images, some great really detailed images, again, the kind of caption provided here below to provide you some of that detail as presented in that research article to kind of show you that level of advanced level of complexity here. So another kind of morphological kind of look here, um, these SEM images, scanning electron microscope images, really detailed images of the morphology of three different types of glandular trichomes. We have, uh, again, D. E and F here. We have the stalked sessile and then the bulbous uh, located right here. Keep in mind we are looking at the epidermis there, so we're looking at structures that are raised from the epidermis. The unique features of these particular um, uh, trichomes, we can kind of see image right here. The cannabis uh, CSG trichomes are responsible for cannabinoid and monoterpene biosynthesis. These are the sites where those are being produced. This does require gland cells and a secretory cavity. So within those structures, what you're looking at, you know, that cloudy appearance, their amber appearance or clear appearance, this is kind of what's going on inside of those regions. There's genetic mechanisms regulating the biochemical and morphological changes that occur during the uh, CSG trichome development and really they're not that well understood. We know that they occur, but not really well understood. So an area great for future scientific research to be done. And we can kind of see the location really close to the eight disc cells here. And then we see that building of that initial stock and then that true stock developed here. And it's what's occurring within here that the plant is regulating that development of those cannabinoids as well as those terpenes. So exactly the genes um, responsible for that, again, not well understood, but a great area here for scientific discovery going in the forward in the future. Now here's just kind of a zoomed out version of kind of a granular trichome, again, covering on that leaf surface. These sessile granular trichomes will have secretory vesicles encapsulated by a waxy cuticle. Keep in mind the outside portion of plants is waxy, lipid-based, and that's to be water repellent, much like our own skin. We produce a lot of oils and lipids, very water repellent. This waxy cuticle will contain several smaller vesicles, which are extracellular components separated by apoplastic space. So we're kind of getting that development of these three-dimensional structures within or with on top of that epidermis. The entire vesicle apparatus is attached to a rosette of gland cells, which are themselves connected to the rosette of striped cells, which are connected to a basal cell, which is connected to the stalk cells. So we're having these multiple kind of building blocks to create that stalked alt 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 trichome in the end. The stock contains cells which are designed to pump substrates into the secretory cell rosette, which again, in this area up here, where typically growers are looking to be, whether it's cloudy or amber color, this is the actual location they're looking at. Why are they looking to coloration change? Because there's some indication to when the cannabinoids are being produced within those glandular trichomes. Now, hopefully if you stuck together this long, our last little bit here, our secretory cells, the plastids within the secretory cells produce the CBGA and terpenes, which are then transported through the cell wall into the secretory vesicles where they form what Albrecht describes as hyaline areas, which form secretory vesicles in that area. These little bulbs, uh, uh, these little bubbles are where the secretory me secondary metabolites are synthesized and then stored.
CBGA is produced in the secretory cell plas plastid and then exported into the secretory vesicle for further manipulation by proteins called synthases. And this is looking at enzymes all occurring in that one little top bulbous uh, category there. Most growers just look at, eh, is it cloudy, is it clear? There is a lot going on in that region, a lot more than I think most growers uh, realize and maybe appreciate. Hopefully future scientific discoveries can unlock some of the pathways here uh, so we can better understand exactly what's going on in these trichrome structures.